Hello everyone, today we're looking at the coronation of Elizabeth I with the objective of finding out how the English felt about her becoming the new queen. Your starter is to describe what you know about the rule of Mary I. So please do go ahead and pause the video now, write down your title, your LO, and your starter. And when you feel you've got a decent answer down, you can go ahead and resume the video. So going on from our starter, describe the rule of Mary I. There were a few things that we could say. We should be noting down, first and foremost, she was a Catholic, and she was a very strict Catholic at that. She made many, many changes to England, mainly by changing the religion from Protestantism back to Catholicism uh, after Edward VI had passed away. She was extremely brutal. She earned the nickname Bloody Mary. Uh, she started the Marian persecutions, which were going after Protestants. She forced people to keep their Roman Catholic faith or to convert if they were Protestants, and this made her incredibly unpopular among Protestants, so much so that thousands of Protestants actually fled England and went to Switzerland to hide out uh, until her death in 1558. So now we have some key words to look at. We have royal progresses, theology, and coronation. So as always, pause the video now, try to match them up in your head as best you can. Uh, when you think you've got them right, resume playing the video and check to see how you did, and then we'll get these written down in our note. So looking at the first royal progresses, this is any kind of tour uh, that a monarch undertakes. Usually these are for propaganda purposes to try and uh, kind of be closer with the people. And you can think of this in modern context when our prime minister visits a school or a workplace. Uh, it's just to try to become a bit more relatable and to make sure that people understand that they're present in the role as leader. Theology. This is the study of the Christian faith through the various teachings of the Bible which means a coronation is a ceremony where a new, mark, uh, new monarch is crowned. Uh, and this is often done so by the Archbishop of Canterbury. So please do make sure that you have those three key terms correctly identified in your note. So before we get into the coronation of Elizabeth, let's just have a refresh of Mary I. And we're just going to use the image on the right-hand side uh, to analyze a little bit about her personality. We already know about her personality. We know about the type of queen she was, but we're going to use the image to supplement our knowledge. So what can this portrait tell us about the rule of Mary I? And I'd like you to explain. So please do go ahead and pause the video now. Look at that image on the right-hand side and try to gauge what type of person Mary is based on what you see and what her rule as queen would be like. And when you've got a few ideas, you can resume the video and just cross-reference what you came up with with the answers that are appearing on the screen. So you've had a chance to look at the image. Looking at Mary the First, she appears very serious, almost emotionless if we look at her face. Uh, she's very well dressed. She's wearing plenty of jewelry. This is showing off how wealthy and how powerful she is. If we look at her pose, she's very upright. Her shoulders are, are firmly raised. Her chest is pointing forward. And this comes across as extremely authoritative. So just based on the image itself, we can see that she's very powerful uh, and very authoritative. And based on what we already know about Mary, uh, she was incredibly powerful, but also quite terrifying. So enough about Mary, let's look at Elizabeth. So in your notes, write down the following quick facts about her. Elizabeth was incredibly well educated. She spoke Greek, Latin, French, and Italian, as well as English. Uh, she was very, very skilled at sewing and archery. She studied theology in depth. She was very quick-tempered, and if she got angry, she would often spit and swear at people. She nearly died from smallpox at a younger age. This left her with very poor skin and a number of scars, and Elizabeth obsessively wore makeup. Now, in the 1500s, makeup contained lead. We know that lead is very poisonous. We don't use lead in, in anything really anymore. Uh, your pencils contain graphite, not lead, even though it's called lead. 
but she would wear makeup obsessively, and the lead in the makeup would actually cause her skin to dry out and get a rash. So she would then wear more makeup to cover up that rash, causing more skin problems. So she would then get more makeup to cover up those issues. She cared a lot about her appearance and spent a lot of money on her clothing and makeup. And she did come under scrutiny at many times during her reign for this. Now, following on from Elizabeth's spending, uh, we're going to look at her coronation, and that is when she was actually crowned as Queen of England. Her coronation was colourful, it was expensive, splendid, there was music, uh, loads of parades and pageants, and colour was something that was actually very important. Colour in clothing comes from various dyes. Now, these were very expensive, and most clothing at the time was either uh, black, white, or even like a brownish beige colour. It was very expensive to dye clothing, so by having colors at her coronation, again, it showed off another element of wealth. It was two days in length. Elizabeth traveled from Whitehall to the Tower of London, and she was crowned on the 15th of January, 1559, in Westminster Abbey. Now, on the right-hand side, we can see an image, and this is Elizabeth's royal progress in London in 1559, so we can see she is riding in this cart being carried by uh, members of her royal court. And in the background, we can see loads of people from England, uh, mostly, well, probably Catholics in this image, but a lot of Protestants in there as well. And they've come down just to try to catch a glimpse of the Queen. Now we have a question to look at. Why would the crown, and the crown means the, the royal uh, house, if you will, would want Elizabeth's coronation to be so magnificent? So please write the following question down in your notes. You can pause the video uh, now, have a go at answering that as to why you think that they would want Elizabeth's coronation to be so great. And when you're done answering that, resume playing the video and we'll look at a possible answer together. So why would the crown want her coronation to be so magnificent? We have to remember Elizabeth was a Protestant in a Catholic country, and having this magnificent, expensive coronation, it would show everyone how wealthy and powerful she was, uh, but hopefully to win over those who opposed her. And this display of power and wealth could even go as far as discouraging people from plotting to remove her from power. So here we have a image of the route that Elizabeth took for her coronation. So if we go ahead and get the highlighter out. So we can see she left Whitehall here. Uh, this is kind of opposite where the London Eye is. So think of the Houses of Parliament. So she left Whitehall and went all the way along the river, around Blackfriars, all the way to the Tower of London. Now, if you were to go and do that route today, it would take you a about 50 minutes to an hour, kind of around that time frame to walk it. And she walked along the river so people could go in boats and see her, but as well as a kind of landmark for people to go to in the Elizabethan era was just the river. Uh, so people heard about the coronation, they automatically went down towards the riverside to be able to catch a glimpse of the queen. Now in the next slide, we're going to have a reading uh, with further details about her coronation. Please do pause that reading as you need to, to be able to make some detailed notes. Elizabeth's coronation. It was important for Elizabeth to win the support of her subjects, in particular her most powerful subjects. If the upper class and wealthy leaders accepted Elizabeth, they could use their considerable influence in their local communities to help her maintain control. Her first step towards achieving this was through her coronation, which took place in London on the 15th of January 1559. Elizabeth was determined to create a strong initial impression and as a result the coronation was a lavish, grand affair. A royal journey by barge along the River Thames took place with the ceremony taking place in Westminster Abbey. It was attended by the majority of Elizabeth's nobles as well as by many important foreign visitors. Despite facing debts of nearly £250,000, approximately £136 million today, on becoming Queen. Despite this debt, the coronation cost about £16,000, £8 million today, to give an impression of wealth and power. 
the coronation became an act of propaganda, as did her use of many portraits. Now, you've listened to a little reading about the coronation. It's just not quite enough to actually understand what it would have looked like. Uh, in the description of this video down below, there is a link to another video which will show you uh, what the coronation probably looked like. It was from a film produced uh, about five years ago about Queen Elizabeth I. And you can use the images here on the right-hand side as well to answer the following questions. Imagining that you were present at Westminster Abbey when she was crowned queen. You want to comment on the decorations inside the abbey, the clothing that people were wearing, and remember about colours and colours being quite expensive, how Elizabeth actually arrived at the abbey, the clothing that Elizabeth was wearing during the coronation, and the overall atmosphere of the event. So do take a few minutes, watch that video clip, again it's in the description down below, uh, and use the images on the right hand side to answer those. So it's time for the final task of the lesson. Uh, news in the Elizabethan era traveled very, very slowly. It was only spread by messengers and travelers in between villages and towns, and it wasn't always that accurate. Getting up-to-date news could mean that you were hearing about events that took place a month, two, or even three months in the past. Now, although Londoners knew about their new queen, most people living in and around the High Wycombe area might not have even heard that Mary had died and Elizabeth was the new queen of England. So your task is to create an image to show that Mary has passed away and Elizabeth is now in charge. And remember that at this time, most people can't read, so they could only understand a very limited amount of words and pictures would be far easier for them to comprehend. Your image should be about half a page in size and contain the name of the new queen, her religion, the date of the coronation, the cost of the coronation, or any details about it. And again, you can refer to the image on the right-hand side of this screen for a little bit of help as to what that coronation would have looked like.